As our planet reaches various tipping points and feedback cycles, we are filled with anxiety, with fear, with frustration, anger perhaps, but also a sense of uh, tension between that what we know we have to achieve and that what we haven't achieved yet. And we're asking ourselves, how could that be? How could there be no progress, significant progress in the last 25, 35 years of climate action and negotiations? And we believe this is largely because we have been pointing in the wrong direction with our targets. We should be pointing downward at lower temperatures, not higher temperatures, at lower CO2 emissions in the atmosphere, not higher ones. 25 years ago, 35 years ago, when this all started to become popular, we already had too much CO2 in the atmosphere, 350 parts per million, as opposed to 280 for the last million year. Now we're at 415. We're even higher in methane. We were higher in methane back then. We had too much carbon. There had never been a carbon budget. And so this is something that science is now beginning to realize, and therefore action has to follow. We would like to pursue with you, with the world, 10 action points which are so crucial in moving it to another level, into another plane of effectiveness. The first point is to establish national and international climate defense budgets, which are focused on mobilizing our economy, our society, to focus on this core issue. It's not a marginal issue, it's a central issue. The second point is that we want to embrace internationally and bilaterally climate diplomacy initiatives, peace initiatives, that bring down the tensions the military exchanges, uh, the warfare, and focus on the common enemy of fossil-fueled climate change. Third point, very crucial, is to change our emission targets from up to down, from uh, a budget of 400 gigatons to a budget that is already depleted, to reverse the flow of emissions back into the economy, back into our agriculture, back into our forests and oceans. Fourth, in order to do that, we also have to declare fossil fuels as uh, undesirable, as toxic. We have to tax them as the source. We know that they're harmful to our health. We know that they're harmful to our climate stability. Let's make the next step, begin to excerpt and out of our economic reality. Fifth, we would like to engage in a fossil fuel restructuring program of national and global proportions to help the industries reconstruct and redirect themselves. The sixth point goes hand in hand, which is to build up a regenerative economy that boosts jobs, opportunities in education and research in renewable energy and regenerative technologies. The next point is also very, very crucial, the seventh point of biosequestration. To enable our agriculture and our forests and our wetlands to sequester carbon from the atmosphere on a massive scale. That goes hand in hand with the eighth point, which is industrial sequestration. To build carbon fiber based materials for airplanes, for cars, for our buildings, but also use wood, sustainably harvested as the primary production base for the building and architectural industries. And the ninth point is also very, very crucial, they're all important, is to use this extraordinary boost of our economy that is going to ensue, has to ensue, in this mobilized economy to employ, resettle the one to three billion refugees that will be expected in the next 50 years due to building as usual, bu building as usual uh, climate change. And so this migration wave needs to be anticipated. It's welcome to us in our boosted economies. And finally, the tenth point is to look at the finance industry and rebuild it into an industry that rewards short-term gain, into an industry that has the levers to reward long-term sustainable investments, but also one that captures future differential cost savings and rewards them today to what we call future banks. So here are 10 points, 
and we've been delighted to contribute to this, course, this global discourse on how to stabilize our climate.